where God begins to teach us. So we started uh, on Genesis 39, verse number 20. We start over there again. Uh, Genesis 39, 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. Now, we studied this um, word called bound, and we began to realize that it is a place of, uh, prison is a place of oppression, where there's a lot of harshness, where there's a lot of uh, troubles, a place that nobody wants to be there, a place where once liberty is gone, he is no longer carrying out his own will, he is bound, praise God. And we found that God uses those um, areas, and we saw in the life of Joseph, he lined up his life to the will of God, and God's abundant grace began to work in him, praise God. And then we also learned after that, in verse number 20, that a prison is a place of obscurity, a place of darkness, a place unknown, your future is unknown, uh, you go through troubles, you feel lonely, and when you turn to God and understand God's um, word as your highest authority, that very place which looks to be a place of unknown and unlimited trouble begins to change into a blessing. And the key over there we learned was that a person learning to submit to God's word, making God's word his authority and living on God's word. Praise God. In verse number 21 we learned that, but the Lord was... Now for the Lord to be with Joseph we learned that when a person is operating in love and forgiveness, the Lord is with you. We also learned in James chapter 3 that when a person hates or is bitter, offended or any kind of negative attitude, the Lord is not with him because now the person is not walking in humility but is walking in pride. And we learned yesterday when there is pride, God himself resists the pride. He himself fights against the pride because if he doesn't fight against the pride, then that pride will take you to hell. He wants to destroy once that pride is destroyed, you become humble. He not only forgives you, he exalts you. He takes you on his journey of great blessing. So in verse number 21, we see that the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. So here is a place where uh, Joseph began to learn God's presence. He began to learn God's providence. He began to un understand that God has his purpose and God has his power. And then we took uh, different examples of different people like Daniel, Sedrak, Meshach, Abednego, Martha, and Mary, and Lazarus' death. We saw the, lo the loaves and the fish being m multiplied. And all these you see when a person is in the midst of crisis. Amen. So the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper. So there, this is a place of opportunity. Mostly when we look at ourselves, we only look at, is somebody going to come and help me? But actually speaking, this is a place where you look out for uh, opportunities to be a blessing to others. Amen? A very powerful truth that, uh, that started things changing in Joseph's future. Praise God. We also learned in this that it is the change in the thinking that is needed and not the other way around that you start changing your action without changing your thinking. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then we went further. In verse number 22, we learned, and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. So a prison is a place of obedience because your emotions are negative, Everything around you is negative, and there is a lot of opportunity to say, I cannot obey God because so many things are against me. I can't, it's so much of unfair things have happened to me. Everything around me is just unjust. Praise God. Hallelujah. But what is God expecting from us? He is expecting from us in the midst of prison experience, how much can I be faithful and still serve him diligently? Hallelujah. So who chooses? Yesterday we learned who chooses. 
to serve God. On, it's, it's myself. To what degree I will serve God. And when I serve God, to what degree am I willing to obey? Are the trials going to stop me? Or am I going to overcome the trials with my obedience? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, submission is the key to obedience. Amen? So, the whole idea is the devil trying his best to stop you from obeying God. So, today we are going to study the last uh, uh, portion of the prison experiences. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did the Lord made it to prosper the Lord made it to prosper so the key is that Joseph began to prosper even in the most difficult unfavorable place praise God so it is a place of overcoming and that's why we are overcomers in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's what we learn. This is the 39th chapter. If you go to the 40th and the 41st chapter. We see how Joseph began to glorify God in everything that he did. And even when he was brought before the king. When the prisoner remembered. That when the, nobody in the kingdom could interpret the dream. And the prisoner remembered and said to the king. There is a person in the prison to whom God himself speaks. So that morning, Joseph was summoned before the king and the king said, I want you to interpret the dream. And he said, I cannot interpret the dream, but my God can interpret the dream. In other words, even his gift, he said, that he is not the owner of that gift, but God is the owner of that gift and he gave glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so also in our life, we have got different gifts, different talents that God has given us. And many a times we take uh, pride in claiming the ownership of those gifts. Come on. But here is Joseph showing his humility by saying, it's not he, but God. And when, God, when he interprets the dream, the king buys that. And the king promotes him to become the governor of Egypt. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So before he could go to the next level where God wanted to take him and make him the governor, God had to set and check Joseph's heart. Because with the authority or the promotion or the position comes lots and lots of responsibility. So he wanted to see what was Joseph's attitude before he can give him the promotion. And what God found that in these two years, Joseph was excellent in touching other prisoners' heart. By his servanthood heart, he was able to touch their lives and, and be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, also in our life, there are opportunities that come our way. In Joseph's life, that opportunity came when he was in front of the king. But to that opportunity to materialize and bring forth the result, the preparation was all these years. Just like an athlete who goes for an Olympic, and that day when he gets the medal, everybody's shouting, screaming, and all that. But only the person who has got the medal knows how many days and hours and of all that sacrifices he had to put to prepare himself before the big game. Amen? So also in our lives, we got to understand that all these things that we are going through every day in our life is nothing but a preparation. And in this preparation, uh, it's always going to be God looking at our heart condition. Always remember, when God has to bless you, he will always use somebody, a human being, to come into your life to bless you and take you to the next level. The same it is with the devil. When he wants to destroy you, he is going to use some human being to come into your life and make a mess in your life. 
Hallelujah. So every person coming into our life, the question is, what was my response? Hallelujah. When you read the Bible, you will find one thing that God is never interested in our achievements. God is always interested in our attitude in the midst of our achievements. Now let's say somebody organized a big program and it was a super hit success and everybody began to praise the person who brought such success. But to get the job done, that person was very arrogant, the person was extremely ruthless, the person had no right heart condition. The world sees what have you achieved in your life and they give success or not. But in God's kingdom, it's not that way. In God's kingdom, he is not interested in your achievement. He is more interested in your attitude in the midst of your achievement. In the, in the, when, when you are achieving something, God is interested whether this person was depending on himself or was he depending on God. And that's why Paul was always excited about his troubles. He was every time excited of his persecution. Because all those things that came against him, he was not capable of facing them. And now that he knows that he's weak, he would always turn to God for help and be in fellowship with God and God's grace would show up. And that's why he would always boast of his weaknesses and he would say, as for me, I am excited about, the, about my weaknesses and I'm boasting of my weaknesses because in my weaknesses, my God shows up and makes me strong. And that's why he says, his grace is sufficient for me. Hallelujah. But for that, to come to that understanding, Paul had to go through lots and lots of training. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why uh, in, when we were in school, did we pass the test to go to the next level? Yes. And, and our exams were always any, any time or it was given a date. A schedule was given. But when it comes to spiritual uh, exams, praise God, spiritual exams can be any moment. And there can be as many exams as it can be. And the question is, every time the word of God is studied, the devil comes to tempt you. Say that, tempt you. And the Lord comes to test you. Hey, is there a difference between tempting you and testing you? What is the difference? Tempting comes from the devil, testing comes from God, but you are in the same trial. Hey, hey, so what's testing? And what's tempting? Were you ever tempted? People of God? Were you tempted? So what's temptation? Huh? And what is testing? Ah, sorry? Mm. Mm. And test temptation? So in other words, you want to say that temptation is that pressure that comes on you to see to it that you fall into sin. That you fall into sin or you go away from God. Temptation. And, 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 and testing is? So testing comes from God and the intention of the test is not to lead you away from himself, not to lead you into sin, but to get you stronger and closer to God. Hallelujah. And that's why Abraham was tested. Why was he tested? To see his faithfulness. Did, did Abraham pass the test? How did he pass the test? Hey, come on, there should be something. Hey, listen, listen. Uh, do you pass, did you pass the test in your exams? How did you pass the test? By writing the right answers. So what was the right answer for Abraham when it came to sacrifice his son? 
obedience. Now, now for him to obey, what gave him that assurance to obey? Why was he confident in his obedience? Yeah. Okay, let, 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 let's study. Very good. Let's study a little. How will you and I be an overcomer in a prison experience? Okay, let's go to Genesis 22, please, sir. Brother Tony. 22, Genesis 22. Verse number one. Let's start quickly. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Now listen, the word tempt does not mean evil, okay? Because the Bible in James says, God cannot tempt you with evil. Okay? It's the word for test, okay? God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Then, two. And he said, Take now your own, or thy only son Isaac, whom you love, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer them there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you of. Now God did not give him a complete address. He just told him go to the mount. We always want the complete address, isn't it? When you step out in faith, it's always on adventure. And in this adventure, the glory is that uh, you are always depending on the Holy Spirit. That's the beauty part. Praise God. And, the, and Abraham... Uh, called up the intercession team, he called the parish priest and he called everybody and said, pray for me. What did he do? Th there, is, there is always a season. A good seed, a good seed, obeyed or planted in an off season, the seed will die. It will perish. A good seed in a good season will produce the harvest. So when God told him that instruction, uh, Abraham could have said, God, I'm going on 40 days fasting and I'll let you know. Or early in the morning. What is this writing? He rose early up in the morning. And uh, saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went to the place which God had told him. Okay, four. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. This is a hold on, Tony, Tony, Tony. This is the key to pass the test. This is the key to pass the test. It was a three days journey. Is he also caught up in a prison? Because he loves his son and his son came after long prayers of 25 years and now he has to offer his son as a sacrifice. What do you think would have been the thoughts in his mind? <coughs> Disappointment. What else? Did I hear it right? Anxiety. Okay. Did Abraham speak to his wife Sarah about what he was going to do? Why not? She would have sacrificed him there itself. <laughs> not even to the Mount Moriah. We would have had in the Bible. Abraham went and spoke to Sarah. And that very moment, Sarah caught him and sacrificed him to the Lord. Don't touch my baby. Now, did Abraham speak to his wife? So when God gives you some instructions and you're carrying out God's instruction, don't talk to somebody who will stop you uh, uh, from carrying out what God has told you. And please don't go and discuss with people with unbelief. Please don't discuss with people in the flesh. Because they are going to give you so much of, uh, so much of, uh, uh, so much of, um, Discour the discouragement and, and later on you will come back and say, oh, I think so, I heard the ghost speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what was he doing three days? He is in a prison in his mind. 
Now I want to show you what he was doing for three days. Okay. Three days he was thinking about the promises of God. Because on the fourth, fifth line, just give the fifth line, then we come back to the fourth line. And Abraham said unto his young man, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. And, and, hey, hold on, hold on. And we'll go over yonder and worship. Worship, say that word, worship. Worship means we will go and carry out God's word. We will, we will go and submit to God completely and totally. Now, how many of us can truly worship when you have an, an issue like this? Worship is when a person is totally and completely in submission to God and saying, God, whatever you said, let it be done. Was Mother Mary worshipping when the angel Gabriel came and spoke to her? That's worship. When you offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God is worship. Hallelujah. Where you're saying, not my will, your will, Lord, whatever you want. Now, is it easy to worship God when you are under so much oppression? Then how come Abraham was saying, I'm going and I'm so excited. I'm going and worshiping my God. And when I'm going for this worship, I don't want to take you. Do you know why? Because if I take you there for that worship, you will surely hinder my worship. In other words, you will hinder me from carrying out God's orders. So don't take along somebody who is a, 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 a person who has got unbelief in your worship. He will hinder you from carrying out God's orders. Hallelujah. And we will come back to you. Now here and come again to you. He's saying, I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Means we will come back again to you. Now, isn't he speaking a lie? Yeah, so isn't it a lie? Huh? You sure? Anybody having an RSV Bible? In the RSV Bible, it's clearly given, we shall come back to you. Absolutely clear. We. Now, why is he so sure about we? Because in the prison, the devil tempts you and says, you are absolutely wrong. But in the prison, God strengthens you in the test and says, just submit to my promise and I will show you my glory. Hallelujah. So what was that promise? Let's go to, uh, which one comes first? 22 or 21? 22, very good. Hey, which one comes first? 22 or 21? Don't tell me to teach that now. Which one comes first? Because the scripture says, the one who is last shall come shall be first. And how true the scripture is. The one who entered last is already sitting in front. And we were, we were studying on which one comes first. And you just showed us. Praise God. Now 21 comes first or 22? Good. So let's go to 21 verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, Abraham, uh, it let it not be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of that bond woman in all that Sarah has said unto you. Hearken unto her. Hearken. Hearken to whom? To Sarah. To Sarah's voice. For in, for in Isaac shall your seed be called. In other words, he's saying not in Ishmael, but in Isaac your descendants shall multiply. So three days, what is he doing? Three days, he's only chanting the promise of God and he's saying, I don't know. Say that, I don't know. Say that again. Say that again. Can you say it boldly, please? I don't know. Again. Do you know how powerful that is? That's how the kingdom of God works. That you don't know. And you're not supposed to know. 
somebody is saying, have I come to the right place? You mean to say, I'm not supposed to know? No, you are not supposed to know. Let me show you. Uh, then we come back, okay? Give me uh, Mark 4, 26. And Jesus said, and Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground then and should and should there's one thing God is asking us that you cast the seed and go to sleep but please don't go to sleep asking and getting worried now is the seed the word of God is the seed the promise of God and if that seed is the promise of God and you cast it into your ground, that is your heart, then go to Can you touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, please go to sleep. But not now, but not now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> now he never said go to sleep worried. He said go to sleep and rise night and day. In other words, when you get up in the, when you get up in the morning, Go and do all your responsible work. And when it is night, stop everything and go to sleep. And the seed should... Now, now who makes the seed spring? Hello, who makes the seed spring? God makes the seed spring. And so who makes the seed to grow? God makes the seed to grow. And he... See, if you want to operate in God's kingdom, please don't ask God, this is the promise. Can you tell me how does it work and how you will do and you do this and you do that and when will it happen, where will it happen, who, whom will it happen, which, all those questions, no more. I don't know. My job is to cast the seed and forget. And every time the devil shows up and says, uh, how is it going to happen? I don't know. Who is going to come to your life to get you out of this? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? The Bible says I'm not supposed to know. I'm supposed to only thank God that I cast the seed and that seed is supposed to grow and bring in the harvest. I'm not the one to bring the harvest. The seed is supposed to bring the harvest. My job is to water the seed by saying, Thank you, Lord, the seed is growing and the seed is producing the harvest. Now, what was Abraham doing those three days? He cast the seed into his heart and said, God, you said, not me, you said that my son Isaac is the one through whom the descendants are going to come. And I don't know how it will happen because my job is to do what you told me to do. So I'm going to carry out your orders anyway. But I also know Lord. That if my son is not raised from the dead. And he doesn't make me a grandfather. Then your word becomes a lie. So I am at rest. Because I have your promise. And I am going to sleep without worry. Has anybody ever slept with worry? Has anybody at least once in your lifetime slept with worry? When you said always, you know what you just said? God, I don't trust you. And how boldly you said it, always. Hmm? As if we did a very big job. You know, when you worry and go to sleep, it's the highest form of unbelief and highest form of saying, I don't trust your Faithfulness to your promise. Worry is extremely demonic. Do you know that? Doubt is demonic. Worry is demonic. And now it gives rise to fear. Very good brother. It's a demonic spirit. And as long as your mind is caught up with all those things. Now you're asking. When will you do it? Who is going to come to help me? From where? All those questions. And the devil keeps blasting those questions to your mind. And you are saying, 
Lord, please do this and do that and that and that. Your job is to plant the seed. Now put that Genesis 22 verse 4 and let's see how, what did Abraham do? And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. Three days was his eyes lifted up. The three days that he was journeying, not at all. He was not looking on the right or left. He was looking only on the promise for three days. Now what happens when a person is going on chewing the same thing over and over again? If the person is chewing, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. If the person is going on cheap chewing the same thing over and over again, and if it is negative, is he growing faith or unbelief? So when Abraham was chewing the word of God, the promise of God for three days, and when he came to the destination, who do you think spoke to him? The word spoke to him. The promise spoke to him. And he saw, and he saw the place far off. There are many of us who in our worry begin to see things which are not true. When you are worried you are seeing, might be some of you uh, must have even saw yourself in a coffin. Hallelujah. Let me, let me give you an example. There was once a retreat going on on the power of intercession. So this preacher was teaching on how you can pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to pray for the other. So after the class was over, he said, now it's a practical time. I want you to go to somebody whom you don't know. And tell that somebody, I want to pray with you. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you in the praying. So first you pray, then the other person prays. Praise God. The prayer was over. So this person said, I prayed for you, this, this, this. Now what did you pray for me? The person said, I prayed for you something, but I don't want to tell you because it's extremely dangerous. Now if a person says that, will that person's mind be sh shut down? No. After every 15 minutes, the person says, tell me. <laughs> now if I tell you, you'll get into fear. Now it will smoke you, it tell no. Tell no. And this person said, okay. You promise not to get into fear? The lady said, yes. I won't get into fear. So she said, I saw you young, like now, in the coffin. The moment she said that, this lady began to see herself in the coffin. And what happens to her children? What happens to her husband? She started crying and she cried and cried and she now started crying so loudly and the preacher was preaching. And he said, what happened? She would not stop. The preacher had to cut off his preaching, take this lady and the other lady behind the scene and ask them what happened. And this person said, listen, I actually saw her in the coffin. So now the preacher was saying, oh God, what did I do? <laughs> and he began to ask, Holy Spirit, come on, tell me, what's this message? I don't understand. Please help me, give me wisdom. And the Holy Ghost told him, the coffin shows is very true. But the interpretation is wrong. This woman had three abortions. And in this retreat, she repented and asked God for forgiveness. So because she asked forgiveness, her old self has been put in that coffin. And now the Holy Spirit has given her a new life. So this preacher asked her, did you have abortions? She said, yeah. Three? She said, yeah. So he said, all these years you had not confessed, not repented. So today when you repented, the Lord has forgiven you. And he has put your sin in the coffin, your old self. And from today, you are a new person. Now she began to scream with joy. Now, the same thing, wrong interpretation. Are, are, you, are you following? So now, what about, what about Abraham? With his eyes, he, can, he, he, he might even visualize that my son is dead. But with the eyes of the promise of God, 
He's saying, hey, through my son, there's going to be a resurrection. Now, please understand, we believe in resurrection of Jesus because the scripture says, but during the time of Abraham, there was no case of resurrection. But because of the promise of God, he is what? Believing. So when I'm in a prison, I need the promise of God in the midst of my temptation, in the midst of my test, because the promise of God will strengthen me and help me to overcome the, the, the test. And when the, when the devil comes to tempt me and get me into fear and distract me and take me away from God, the, the promise of God becomes an anchor. Just like you put the ship in the anchor, the waves come and hit it, but the ship is still there because the anchor has caught caught of the rock. In the same way, the promise of God is a spiritual rock to my mind because the fastest vehicle on this planet Earth is the mind. There are some of you who are sitting here looking at me, but you might have even visited your home and the next neighbor doesn't even know. You are sitting there and looking at me, but you might be not here. You might be in the kitchen now. Possible? So, the mind is the fastest vehicle and to bind this vehicle and keep it grounded, God has given us his promises. And those promises become an anchor that my soul is no longer wandering everywhere. Hallelujah. So, so what did Abraham do? Three days he anchored his mind on one thought that God, you promised me and I'm stuck to it. Now, when he was doing that, was he now worried in carrying out his obedience? Not at all. Why? Because that word has strengthened him. And that's what God is saying to us. We are overcomers. Say that we are overcomers. Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. Say that I am an overcomer. Again. Again. Now, what makes you think that you are an overcomer? Huh? Okay, let me show you how we are overcomers. Uh, give me 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Please read it. For whatsoever is born of God. Pause, pause, pause. When you and I were born from a mother's womb, we were designed to fail. We had in us the corruption that came from Adam when he fell into sin that we were destined to fail. Because Satan was our master. He ruled over us. But the day we got born from the father's womb, not the earthly father, but the heavenly father's womb, we got born again. Now I want you to experiment this. You take a stone and throw it into the water. It sinks. You take a big log of wood, 10 times, 50 times heavier than that, and you throw it into the same water, it floats. Because the wood has a property by which it floats. In the same way, you and I, through the Holy Spirit and through the word of God, we have been given the power to overcome every work of the devil. That's what he's saying. Are you, are, you, are you with me? But the problem is we don't know that we are the overcomers. And what is it that helps us to overcome the world? He says it's not God. It's not God. It's not God. Every time you're screaming, God give me the victory. He's saying, listen, don't look at me and tell me to give you the victory. You're going wrong. He's saying, the, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. And the day you got born again, God injected in each one of us the faith. And what faith? The faith that is good enough to overcome the world. Now this faith which is in our spirit, which is designed to overcome the world, I don't know. Now for me to know, he has given me the document. And what's the document? The Bible. So when I understand the Bible, I read the Bible, I begin to understand the truth. Now, when the devil speaks to me, his lies, I say, devil, that's a lie. That's not what God said. It is written here that this is what the word of God says. Now, what did you do? You operated from sense knowledge, Thomas knowledge, 
to Abraham's knowledge, now in the prison, you are an overcomer. So if you have no Bible knowledge, imagine you have the power in you to overcome the sickness, to overcome that situation, to overcome discouragement, to overcome rejection, to overcome hatred. You got all that inside of you, but you cannot use it because you do not know it. All this time we were using the mobile for paperweight, right? Were we using for paperweight? No, it was used for calling. Till one day you came to know, I don't need a torchlight. I can get it on the mobile. Wow. Then you began to know, I don't need to buy a camera. I got it in my mobile. Then you were SS, uh, doing SMS, till somebody said, download WhatsApp. Now you found SMS is free. So, so many applications, when you began to know, you began to use it on your mobile. And until you knew it, you were still using it as a phone or as a paperweight. Now why are your mobiles having so many applications? The factory applications were limited. But now, download man, download man, download. What, is, what are you doing? What are you doing? As soon as you got knowledge, you downloaded. How many of us, when we look at the scriptures in the midst of our prison, are downloading this scripture into our mind and into our heart and saying, now I've got the application, now all I have to do is install it and use it and learn how to use the application. So if you have not downloaded the application, which is free from Play Store or App Store in the same way free from the Bible and you have not downloaded and you go around telling everybody pray over me and let it work why don't you do one thing remove all your application from your mobile go to a preacher and say lay your hands on me that now my mobile will have all the applications that I can use does it work hey come on does it work what's the preacher's job the preacher's job is to install and show you this is how the installation is, this is how you open, and this is how you use. Now, after going home, do you go and practice? I remember words, WhatsApp had come only with, with SMS. Then the calling came, and we did not know. And somebody said, you know what? You can call, and it's free. Y'all don't understand, because y'all are in Dubai, y'all are all jammed. We in India, it's free. Hallelujah. And not only audio, we have got video as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now hasn't the enemy jammed you? In the same way, hasn't he jammed you? So are you not supposed to download your own applications? And use it as much as you want. What is Abraham doing over there in that prison? There is an application that comes from the devil and there is an application that comes from God. The same mobile. Can you use it for the devil? The same mobile. Can you use it for God? So where are you downloading? What are you downloading? Those three days, Abraham was downloading the promises of God. So in the prison, the pressure is so much on your mind that the devil wants you to download his applications. But the freedom of choice is for us. That's the good news. And when you start downloading the application that comes from God's word. Praise God. And you install it. And now you keep on playing it over and over and start using it, using it, using it. You become a champion. I know some youth, believe me, they are looking in front and they type with full, full stop, comma, space, everything. They don't even look down. And the typing will be excellent. And even send comes in that. <laughs> now, uh, uh, did anybody pray over them? I'm asking you. How did they reach there? <laughs> Say that by, again, brother. Hey, children, uh, how does it come, Baba? Huh? No, I'm not saying you, but... Uh, in, in your college, some children might be like this, right? Yeah, how did it come? Practice. Now, now, now the grandma sees that, okay? And now she takes the phone and she does like that. 
And she says, oh my God, what happened? Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, practice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So please write down. Is it good? So, so, so what's going to give you the victory? Your faith. And how does faith come? By hearing and hearing. By the word of God. How much of the word are we hearing every day? And how much of the bad news are you hearing every day? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that a good example of the mobile. Does the mobile need charging? When did you have your last charge? Friday to Friday? And even when the Friday you went to church and it was time for the sermon, sometimes have you seen that, that thing what you put inside to charge has been a little loose. And after one hour you come and you see, Are, loose contact, yeah, nothing had happened. Has it happened to anybody? Yeah. This is what happens when a person goes into the church and looks at the priest but the mind is wandering somewhere or the other and you would never heard uh, what was the teaching, what was the... Uh, sermon, you did not hear anything and when a person says, uh, what, how was that? So, what did they teach you? Uh, it was good. <laughs> okay, what was good? Really good. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are saying, oh my God, it's so true in my life. <laughs> so many a times we go as an obligation. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said to me, you know, I've been listening to the word of God from the CD throughout the day. I said, good. How much do you remember? I'm supposed to remember? <laughs> I thought I have to only keep on hearing. So I said, uh, you heard the whole day. Uh, what did you remember? No, I was only hearing. And some of them will say, brother, I've got very bad memory and I can't remember. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember how much dirhams come every month? How many hours you worked? So honestly, I gone, honestly, I want to give you a solution. Brother Vijay, you are my witness, okay? God says where there should be two witnesses, okay? You are my witness, okay? Will you do, brother? I trust you. Yes. Witness. Yes. Every day, what you are hearing, word to word, write it down. Don't memorize. Just write down. Okay? And send the notes, pictures to my brother Vijay. Do it every day. For one hour. From the CD. For, oh, who wants to do that? Yeah. Who wants to do that? You go and ask a farmer, how does he get the harvest? Who wants to go and plow, man? Who wants to do that? The teacher knows her subject that she remembers. Uh, is she going to the class and saying, Oh my God, I forgot everything. <laughs> Students, we'll learn tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, brother Richard. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, brother Vijay, how can she go and teach a subject? God bless you, Brother Richard, for coming and showing the truth. <laughs> Are you good? You better. You better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who have got memory problem, listen. Please, take that CD, load it in your mobile. It's easy. Listen to one line, pause and write. Why I'm saying to write? Because you can never write without paying attention to what you heard. And the more you give your ear and pay attention... You don't even know how many things I've washed from your mind. Conscious, subconscious, unconscious mind. If anybody is saying, I want inner healing, this is 100% inner healing. Because just as you have a, a shampoo bath, see, see, when the wife takes bath and comes out, the husband says, you smell so good. You say, so good. Praise God. But if the woman gets, if the wife gets angry, now what happens? But if that same wife has a good mind bath 
taking the soap called the word of god and brushing a mind and brushing a mind even if the even if the uh, husband has gone crazy angry but she's still saying lord i still love him i still forgive him and i will still practice agape love and that agape love is what changes the husband when was the last time you took a your mind bath thank god for the silence Now you see, brother Vijay. Everybody wants the latest shampoo, and you spend so much of money for the dust to smell. Isn't the body a dust? But the one which belongs to God, a soul and a spirit. How much do we wash that? And when your soul and your spirit is smelling good with the word of God, you don't need any makeup. You see. because god's glory shows up every time you go somewhere so please don't waste your dirhams to decorate the dust and smell the dust use those dirhams to study the word of god and life will become so beautiful so will i get the notes brother vijay she's got you got his number good good <laughs> after next month when i brother i did not have his number <laughs> hallelujah sorry no 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 with with this labor he is going to kiss the lord and say lord me <laughs> brother vijay i think you should start now a new class all those who are coming please send in a individual not in a group all that you are writing every day notes and i tell you those who have been writing notes within a month you will see so many amazing things happening in your life because the bible says the person who meditates on the word day and night he is like a tree planted by the rivers of living water his leaves never run dry in due season he brings forth the fruit and whatsoever he does prospers the formula is there but it's very very laborious like she said now who wants to do that but i'm not telling now <laughs> it's recorded tony tony is that recorded yeah here everything can be picked up any time we can go rewind and check it out praise god hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> thank you jesus you can laugh 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 how many you want to laugh laugh but when you are in the prison and the devil beats you that time you're not laughing we we can come here and say hi hello he 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 but when you are alone <laughs> and when you come out again <laughs> hallelujah thank you jesus okay write down what we need to understand is that what we need to understand is that that the lord used the trials that the lord used the trials that joseph experienced that joseph experienced to prepare him to prepare him for the place of service prepared him for the place of service God had planned out for him wow to prepare him for the service place for the place of service God had planned out for him you see God put him God put him in the prison to have him in the proper place to have him in the proper place at the proper time <laughs> i have got eye witness i have got eye witness to the testimony that i'm saying i think it was 2016 that my brother vijay took me to sarja prison and we were given 45 minutes to preach and the person in charge was so much engrossed in the preaching that we went on for 2 hours 
Okay? And there were these prisoners who were there. And I was teaching them how the word of God works. And how they can get healed. And how they can use their tongue to prophesy over their life. There was one African, right? And he began to scream every day. In the name of Jesus, I am coming out of this prison. Every day. And every time you would meet somebody, you would say, I'm coming out of this prison. I'm going back home. I'm, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. And how many, after how many months did he come out? Four months. Four months. And the day he was called to come out of the prison, he did not know what actually happened and they released him. Is that true? And I think he came and testified here. Yeah. Now what was he doing? What he heard... He believed. Now what he learned in the prison, he practiced it and that practicing brought him out of the prison. And the best thing is, even after coming out, he doesn't know why they released him. And they suddenly called him and said, hey, your case is dismissed. That's... I say with you. You know, you know, a person who knows that it is the hand of God will run to the house of God and magnify the Lord by screaming and praising. Because he knows who brought him out. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was he in the prison? Yeah. But in the prison, what did he do? What he learned, he practiced. And when he was speaking, he, that's what I have not met him. But when he was speaking to others and screaming and shouting and saying in the name of Jesus, I am coming out of this prison, I am going home. You know, you know, others who said, shut up. When a person is speaking faith, the others can't understand what he's doing. They will come and tell you, Shut up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So right now, through his trials, is God talking to you, my friend? Might be somebody is jobless. Okay? How many times are you saying, I'm without a job, please pray for me? And what was he saying? He never said, I'm in the prison. He said, I'm coming out. In the name of Jesus. I'm out of this prison. So are you supposed to speak your current situation? Or are you going to speak the promise of God? We, we give the answers. Oral exams, good. <laughs> Have you seen oral exams, good marks? <laughs> Practicals, frog. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Biology, oral exams, good. And they gave you a frog. <laughs> or somebody going for, to become a doctor and they gave you a dead body and that fellow stood up. Praise the Lord. Sometimes it has happened, you know. These uh, people who are in the medical, they play a prank. The person is sleeping, okay. And the person goes, suddenly opens his eyes. The students have run away. <laughs> and some of them went into a shock. Praise God. I hope you don't dream about it. Okay. Through his trials, Joseph learned through his trials Joseph learned compassion on others administrative skills and he learned obedience and faithfulness. What is the first thing he learned? What is compassion? Have you heard the word pity? I'm feeling so pity for him. And uh, also the word compassion. Are they both the same? Huh? 
said no. Okay, what's what, what what is the difference? Are, what's the difference? There's a difference. Yeah, spelling. Naughty boy. Shh. Uh, don't 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 listen to him. Huh? Okay, you, you have le- you are senior student. Is there kuch nahi hota hai? Yeah, go ahead. Pities and compassion is not to feel sad. So, in other words, you are saying when a person is feeling pity, he is really feeling sorry, but he does nothing to solve the person's problem. And and, and compassion is he is not only feeling sorry, but he goes and solves other person's problem. Absolutely right definition. Seek <laughs> spelling. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So most of the time we are pity people or compassionate people? <laughs> brother, brother Vijay, your, your ministry works with the orphanages, uh, labor camp, this, that. You are always praying, right? And never go to reach there. Very good. So it's full of pity. Do you know what I was excited when I came for the first time? Is this ministry is not just a pity ministry. It is a ministry of action. Where every Friday the team goes and searches for opportunities to go and change somebody's life. Hallelujah. It's a ministry of compassion. And remember, any person in God's kingdom wants to flourish, his ministry works on the ratio or the, or the, or the level of compassion. I'll give you an example. Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, has been killed. And the disciples of John the Baptist came and took his body And then they came and informed Jesus. The Bible says Jesus was extremely depressed because his cousin had died. And he wanted to leave everyone and go to a deserted place to be alone. But as he was going, he saw a crowd of people coming in search of him. And the Bible says Jesus was filled with compassion. He saw them as sheep without a shepherd and that day he forgot about his own sorrow and he went and ministered to them. And the Bible says on that day he healed them all. Now, was his cousin killed by Herod? By some foolish pranks? Yes. Now, Did Jesus, who had the power, go to Herod's house and fight with him? He never went there. Because he realized it was not Herod, but the devil who used Herod to kill his cousin. So what did Jesus do? He went and preached the gospel and that day bashed up the devil by healing every person. That day, he multiplied the loaves and the fish. So if anyone comes against you, we want to fight with that person. But it's not that person who came against you. It's the devil who used that person to come against you. So when you're fighting against a person, your battle is wrong. In fact, when somebody does something wrong to you, that day, you should be so much filled with compassion for people around who are being lost Yeah, there's a place here. You should be so much filled with compassion for the person who is being lost that that day you should tell the devil, I'm going to beat you on your game and now go and preach more and set more people on fire. You have bashed up the devil in his game. But what do we do? Now what was Joseph doing? In the prison... He was going and serving his other fellow brothers. He was beating the devil at his game. So the more and more you are compassionate and you are reaching out to more people and reaching out and setting their lives free, bondage free, all those free, 
you are actually torturing the devil's kingdom. And this has to be learned. And this is what God began to teach Joseph in the prison because when there is you, when you, our person is in uh, a spiritual prison of unjust suffering, rejection and all that, the devil wants you to focus on your self. But if the person understands that I'm not supposed to focus on myself, but on God and through God unto others, now you are overcome and, and you are victorious. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let us look at Joseph's life, how he started in his father's house and how he became the governor. His training was not just a training, it was a training of progression. Hallelujah. So first we see in Genesis 37, 13 to 14. The progression. Now what was this? He was in his father's house. And his father said to Joseph. Do not die brethren feed the flock in Sechem come and I will send you unto them and he said to him here I am I first thing did his brothers love him or hate him do you like to go to a place where people tolerate you or do you like to be in a place where people celebrate you is his father sending him to a place where all these brothers hate him to the core and what about Joseph? He said, not there. Anything but not there. He is in total submission to his father. And he's saying, here am I. His brothers who are all the time hating him. And yet he's saying, I am willing to go and serve them. Because they had gone taking the cattle. And they have not yet come back. My father is worried about my brothers. I don't care what my brothers did to me. But when my brother seems to be lost, I am going to go in search of them and bring them home and bring news to my father. Amazing assignment. Hey, come on. Do you like to go and help the one who, who tortures you day and night? And what was the first assignment? I want you to go and bring report or your brothers back home. 14. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. And so sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Sechem. In everybody's life, there is a place called Sechem, where when you set out to a place called Sechem, everything looks beautiful and when you reach that place what you had desired or what you had come for suddenly you find nothing is in your favor everything is seems to be lost and now you are in that situation confused what to do and there comes a stranger and sends you to a place called Dothan in Joseph's life he had come only to bring a word little did he know that when he stepped out of his father's house, he's on a journey which would change his whole future. And when he went there and he's searching for his brothers, a stranger says, what are you searching for? And he's saying, I'm looking for my brothers. Did you see where they are? And the stranger says, yes, I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. That stranger who led him to Dothan begins that first trial of Joseph's life where he stripped of his clothes, put in the well to die, and then sold as a slave. In everybody's life, see did here, there is a place called Dothan, where the direction of your life just changed. Come on, did it change? Were there some people who put you into trouble? Nobody? Hello? Something that happened which changed your complete direction he was in his father's house extremely comfortable. Everything was good, brother. Can you see Dothan now? 
Tony, can you see your daughter now? You came to Dubai thinking everything is going to be good. And you started well. Till something went wrong. And it went so wrong that now you are in Dothan and you don't know what to do. It looks like there's no way out. Because when he's sold as a slave, it looks like in this prison I will never come out. I've been to Dothan where I lost everything. So I understand people who are in Dothan, I've got news to tell you, I've been there. And in this Dothan place, praise God, God will not abandon you. He is with you. He is only putting you in a school where you learn to trust him. It's a, it's a skill that you got to learn of compassion. The quicker you learn compassion in a place called Dothan, God will prosper you in that place. And that's what happened. Hallelujah. Genesis 39, 4. So it started with an assignment. Just write down, please. Uh, this will help you. The progression of the assignment that was given to Joseph. First one, he was placed over an assignment. He was placed over an assignment. And what was the assignment? To bring word of his brothers. Genesis 37, 13 to 14. Genesis 39, uh, 37, 13 to 14. Second one, he was placed over a household. He was made a manager. Come on, is that progress? Come on. 37, he sold as a slave. 39, he has become a manager. Now before he becomes a manager, did he have to forgive his brothers? Did he have to learn compassion? Did he have to learn servanthood? Now please understand, he's 17 years old, a son of a rich man. And now, he has to strip, over, strip off everything that he is, his identity, and now take the place of a slave, and even though a slave, give his best in his assignment. Are you with me? Did his identity change? Yes. Now, is he saying, I'm the son of a rich man? No, he's saying, if I'm a slave, I will still, in my slavery, give my best in that assignment. Hallelujah. So he started with a slave, put him in different departments by the Egyptian master, and this Egyptian master saw that he is extremely having a different attitude. He's cheerful all the time. He's loving all the time. He's forgiving all the time. He's efficient all the time. Please write J-O-S-E-P-H. Did you write that? Okay. J, he was a very just person. No jealousy. He was just and having no jealousy. Were his brothers jealous? Yes. Was he jealous? No. Oh, was he obedient to God? Extremely obedient. Praise God. P, was he all the time patient? A man of patience? Come on. S, 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 he was simple and extremely sensitive to obey God's word. Extremely sensitive. Praise God. He was simple. Then J O S E, he was extremely efficient in his job. P, he was full of patience and piety, did not give in to the Egyptians' masters, wives' proposals. Praise God. And H, he was extremely honest and humble. Good. You got the character of Joseph with you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just popped out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You look to be more excited than anybody and saying, this is what I got to do. Good. When a person is a doer, the person can, I can see the teeth. I got it. And a person who is not a doer. Hallelujah. Now everybody is showing me their teeth. <laughs> okay. Third one, he was placed over a prison. He became a manager in a prison. Third one. 
a manager in a prison. Genesis 39, 22 to 23. Now, now, um, before we go any further, did this promotion come because of influence or because of his attitude and faithfulness to God? Have you ever heard people saying, I've been working in a company for the last 10 years, I did not get any promotion. And that girl come, ticky, 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 and she got promotion. Never heard that? Hey, before the company can give you a promotion, the company will always see what's your contribution and how much of profit do you bring to the company. It's not the number of years. It's how efficient are you? What's the quality of your service? The quality of your service decides the level of your promotion. If I wouldn't have been given good quality, I wouldn't have got a chance to come every month. Huh? We discussed this yesterday. <laughs> Now do you understand, Brother Vijay, how the Holy Spirit catches the right person? This is what you were discussing. With whom were you discussing? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so what, what are you focused, what are you supposed to focus on? Promotion or the service, the quality of service? Now, now, was Joseph's quality of service under extreme pressure or no pressure? So where do you find the extreme quality coming out of you? When, when a boss is squeezing you, he's getting all the juice out of you. Let, let, let's say a boss is like me, okay? Very loving, very lean, <laughs> and very cheerful. And you come to work at 8.30, and your time is at 8. And I say, listen, uh, please don't come so late, okay? Try to come at 8. Tomorrow what time will come? Dega, Dega, brother, brother, Dega. Now, a boss is like Brother Vijay. Okay? You come at 8.30 and he gives you the firing like anything. Next day, what time you will come? You, you come at 8. You come at 8. Let's say you come at 8. And you are sitting there, you come at 8. And again he starts firing. And you begin to wonder, eh? I, my time starts at 8 and I came at 8. And he fires and says, then you go inside for your coloring for 15 minutes. <laughs> so you finish all your covering and col uh, not, uh, coloring and everything and come and sit on the table at 8 and before 8. Do you understand that? What will happen? Will that be a change? Always remember, friends will comfort you. Alele kutu kutu chunu. <laughs> Enemies will change you. So was Joseph put in every... in? harsh prison if he was not with God that prison would break him and he would go into depression but the same prison he began to build up his spiritual muscles when you go to the gym you pick up those weights there is pressure and if the pressure is on the arms only this will come this won't go in <laughs> hallelujah but if I start putting pressure on my stomach will it go in yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So is God going to put pressure in our mind? Yeah. For what? To build up spiritual muscles. Hallelujah. Then he was placed over a nation. He was placed over a nation. Genesis 41, 20. Genesis 41, 42, 41. Genesis 41, 40 to 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Okay, okay, before we go there. Has anybody ever had a situation where somebody insulted you and you were hurt? Anybody has ever experienced that? Now, you are extremely hurt, okay? And you are going to sleep. And you are thinking about the hurt. At that time, you hear, you hear 
the voice of God, like God was calling Samuel, Samuel, you hear your voice, uh, the Lord calling out your name, right? <laughs> Come on, I'm asking you, I don't know. Will you hear the voice of God or the voice of the devil? Uh, telling you, look what they did to you, man. Yeah, and see uh, and how much you did that to that person, so good, and see what happened. And you go in that, right? Now what about Joseph? Was he looking at himself or all the time looking to be a blessing to others? The more and more you are thinking about being selfless and being a blessing to others and cheerful, you hear the voice of God. And that's why he was able to interpret the dream. You might be having the gift, but the gift will be extremely sharp and extremely efficient when you become selfless. Because the gifts are never for you. The gifts are to build a church. The gifts are to build people to bring them to faith. But if you are using the gift for your own benefit, there is something wrong. If you are using your blessing for your own benefit, there is something wrong. You, I can guarantee you, you have got a duplicate Jesus. A fake Jesus. But the real Jesus will never teach you to use your gift for yourself. Don't look at me like this. Are you stunned? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Tony, you are going before I can explain. Okay, doesn't matter. You are fast. You, 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 want, you want me to go faster? 41. 41. And 40. Thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word, and according to, unto, unto, whose word? Joseph's word. Shall all my people be ruled, only in the throne will I be greater than you. Under pressure, what word are you speaking? Elisha was surrounded by the king of Syria, his army, and there were in thousands of soldiers. The servant opened uh, uh, the door might be and he looked out and there was an army all around. And he came and told the master, Master we are finished, it's over. There's an army surrounding us, what will we do? He said be quiet. Because the ones on our side are greater than the, are more than them. Now what was Elisha seeing? He was not looking at the army, he was looking at God who is on his side. And he said God can you just open his eyes? And the servant's eyes, spiritual eyes were opened. And he saw horses and chariots on fire of God. Now if this happened in the Old Testament, how much more now in the New Testament with Jesus dwelling in us? So under pressure in a prison, what words come out of a mouth? What you spoke, the Lord said, the Lord did according to the... the According to the words of Elisha. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Write down. As we pass through the prisons of life. As we pass through the prisons of life. God is training us. Just underline that. Put a circle there. God is training us. When we are found faithful, when we are found faithful in these valleys, when we are found faithful in these valleys, we are allowed to experience, we are allowed to experience greater level, we are allowed to experience greater levels of authority and blessings. God uses the difficulties, God uses the difficulties of life, God uses the difficulties of life to grow us, to grow us so that He might use our lives, He might use our lives in a more wonderful way 
in a more wonderful way than would otherwise than would otherwise be possible as we endure as we endure the prison experiences as we endure the prison experiences of life we are trained say that i am trained as you are writing i am trained for expanded usefulness i am trained for expanded usefulness for the lord for the lord hallelujah in bracket you can write down nikki nikki n i c k y nikki uh, go on the youtube and type nikki a man without limbs ah oh, ah oh, ah oh, ah oh, oh. nick okay nick okay nick nikki okay nick nick okay my my mistake yes it's nick okay now hasn't his weakness become his strength now nick could have been sitting there and crying all his life for what he doesn't have but nick began to use what he has and give glory to god and when he began to understand that god is a source and god doesn't make mistakes god doesn't make mistakes if he has done something in my life it is for my good i don't understand god works all things together for good i don't understand now but i'm going to be cheerful i'm going to study i'm going to be faithful i'm going to be compassionate i'm going to be having a servant's heart and serve others now when i'm doing it by the grace of god i begin to find god's purpose in my life hallelujah did nick get married does he have children and uh, uh, four some of them are prophesying don't worry <laughs> hallelujah they are, they are prophesying they are prophesying they are prophesying don't worry don't worry it's a prophecy praise god hallelujah now my question is is he only looking after his family or is he looking after children like him in hundreds do you know his ministry is looking after children like that in hundreds might be even thousand i don't know now with a person when he looks at his natural self is there a future no but is he looking at what he doesn't have or he's looking at what he has and what you have when you use it as a strength that strength will be so great that your weakness will not be seen anywhere close because that strength will take you from glory to glory and that's what happened to joseph he had strength in his relationship with god he had strength in compassion he had strength in obedience and he had strength in his gift his gift worked when he was strengthened in all other areas and god was preparing him for that one moment when he would be a deliverer for his family and also for people around the world because that famine was supposed to come and if these grains would not be there everybody would get wiped out so if you are going through some prison experience i got news to tell you through your prison experience god is not only going to bring you out but you will be a blessing to innumerable people because that experience that you have learned is going to bring people out of their prisons hallelujah see brother um, uh, vijay if i had to say god would heal you and bless you praise god taka 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 god is going to use you to bring uh, so many souls around the world out of their problem oh yeah mm. if it is for me tell me brother when you start doing it for others let me tell you the kind of things that god gives to you is amazing you will be going to sleep i'll be traveling and i've got a transit for 3 hours do you know why the transit because i buy the cheapest flight and in that 3 hours also i'll be doing something or the other at the airport because for me every moment is a time of work either with god or with somebody so in that 3 hours also is fruitful So I never look it as a transit I look at it as an opportunity to do something even at that moment 
And the best part is I saved a big amount of money as well for my ticket. And let me tell you, if you don't know, let me tell you, remember this always. When you fly with the cheapest airline, always remember, it will land on the same runway. <laughs> they never say, we will take you and not land. It lands. Believe me, it lands. And it lands on the same runway, not in some desert. And those who are traveling business and first class, let me tell you another thing. Unless we people in economy don't land, you can't land. <laughs> if we land outside the runway, you are gone for a toss, man. We land first. The economy. Hallelujah. Praise God. What business, business, baat karta hai. Brother, Amara Vajan se pahila land hota hai. That's why even when the flight is empty, you see the passengers are put at the back. You all must have not seen an empty flight. <laughs> Many a times when I come, the flight is empty, but all the passengers are put on the last for the landing. Business wale ko kabhi karta Even there we are serving man with our weight. <laughs> हमारा वजन से देखो आप बराबर लैंड होता है इसके लिए हम लोग वजन भी घटाता नहीं है इट्स फॉर यूज हालेलुया ओके राइट डाउन लास्ट लाइन लास्ट लाइन देयरफॉर वी नीड टू लर्न देयरफॉर वी नीड टू लर्न नॉट टू रिबेल प्लीज पुट इट इन बोल्ड कैपिटल लेटर दिस इज वेयर Many people get defeated. Therefore, we need to learn not to rebel against the prison. Not to rebel against the prison. We find ourselves in. We find ourselves in. Let me give you an example. My sister Sarita is working in a company. Okay? She is very simple, very honest, humble, everything good. And I and my brother are working in the same department. Okay? This person is good to her. But I make her life miserable. All the time complaining to the authorities. And she's called in the office and given a firing. Now she knows. And I say, how was it? Good. <laughs> now, even in her sleep, whom does she see? She sees me. So now her prayer is, God. Please get him transferred, Lord. <laughs> Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of transfer to take place. And I thank you, Lord, he's transferred. And if he's not transferred, Lord, kill him. <laughs> but get him out of my life. And then she goes the next day, I'm still there. Six months, I'm still there. One year, I'm still there. And he's just saying, God, you're not answering my prayer. What God is saying, don't rebel. I put him there to polish you. And if you're not getting polished quickly, I'm bringing three more. One is Brother William is coming and Brother Vijay is coming. Now, do you want to change before I bring them? <laughs> Are you understanding? So please don't rebel. Thank God the examples are making people understand. And, 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 and then on WhatsApp, please pray for, bro, jo, bro, there's a person, Johnson in our office, please pray for him that he begins to change. He doesn't need to change, you need to change. And when you change, your change will change him. Your change will take you on a high level of promotion. Can you tell your neighbor, please don't rebel, change yourself. Uh, brother, 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 please pray for my spouse, brother. I'm going through this. Listen, don't go there. First you change yourself, your spouse will change. Kuch tir lag gaya, brother. Eddam nishane me lag gaya. 
Hallelujah. The good news about the word of God is the, the arrow goes through you, you are bleeding and you are still <laughs> the arrow is saying change. Please change. In this Lenten season God is not interested in how much food you did not eat. He is interested in how much did you change. And then the Lenten season will come and go. You saved your money on the food. And on Easter Sunday, you enjoy, you use that money to enjoy. Hallelujah. So write down, we must learn, we must learn to yield to the Lord's work, to yield to the Lord's work in our lives. And trust him, and trust him. To have his way, to have his way in us, to have his way in us and through us. That's important. In us and through us. He knows where we, where he wants us. He knows where he wants us and he knows and he knows what he would have us do. And he knows what he would have us do. So, let us trust him. Let us learn to trust him. Pila pila yaar, pila pila. He is asking me, Brother Tony, please don't tell people that this water is for me. He is asking me, Deon kya? <laughs> compassion, brother, compassion. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us learn to trust Him and experience and experience the best. He has to offer us. Can I give another three, four lines, brother? Okay, you're so good. The future of our life, the future of our life, is comprised of is comprised of how you think how you think of how you think your thoughts are your plans please underline that your thoughts are your plans God has thoughts and plans for our welfare, for our welfare, success, success, and peace in life, and peace in life. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. You must read yourself. You must read yourself of those things. You must read yourself of those things and people and people that challenge your decision and people that challenge your decision to live by the word. To live by the word. How can two walk together? How can two walk together unless unless they agree? Unless they agree. Amos three three. Amos three three. Next. 
Surround yourself with people. Surround yourself with people who think in line with the word. Surround yourself with people who think in line with the word and who agree and who agree with your success and who agree with your success. The result of your thoughts, the result of your thoughts may not come, may not come right away, may not come right away, but eventually, but eventually, if you follow those plans, if you follow those plans, with extreme attention with extreme attention to de to detail extreme attention to detail then they will manifest then they will manifest last line when you set your mind to a way of thinking when you set your mind to a way of thinking, that mindset, very, very important line, okay? This can get a person from, free from any bad habit. When you set your mind to a way of thinking, that mindset then commands, that mindset, then mindset, that mindset then commands, the chemicals in your body, that chemicals in your body, to line up with it, to line up with it. Thus directing, thus directing your body, thus directing your body towards healing, towards healing, or success, or success. The key to achieving a mindset, the key to achieving a mindset is leaving, is leaving it to, is leaving it to set, is to, li is leaving it, it to set where you chose to set it, where you choose where you choose to set it. Okay, I'll close it with a testimony so that you understand about the mindset. Now, I did not know the sister Judy, but I still recall she was sitting there at the last row and I was speaking about uh, allergies. And she stood up and she said that she has a cough. And I started laughing. As she said, I continually cough and I continually have this cold for how many years? 19 years. So I started to laugh. Now when I started to laugh, I'm not laughing at her. I'm laughing at that allergy which was in her for 19 years and I'm laughing at it and saying it's time for you to go. Okay. Then I said to her, I'm going to ask you to do something extremely silly. Okay. And you look like a joker when you're going to do. But are you willing to do it for Jesus? And she quickly said, yes, I am. And then I said, when I tell you to blow air out, blow it with all your strength. I'm going to pray and I'm going to command that allergy to come out. And you're going to blow the air out. And when you're blowing the air out, you have to set your mind that allergy went out with that air. Isn't it looking silly? And imagine this beautiful lady and everybody watching her. Isn't it looking funny? She did it five times. She did not feel anything happen and she went back home. That afternoon she went to sleep. Now it was time for her to take the medicines. The husband comes to her rescue and says, if that man said that you are healed, is it right? What I'm saying? Okay. 
So the husband, Brother Noel says, if that man said that you are healed, and if you believe you are healed, I don't think so, you need the medicine. So she says, oh yes. And she goes to sleep. And in her sleep, normally, she would cough. Is it right? And how long did she sleep that night, uh, that afternoon? Four hours. Imagine for the husband to see the wife after 19 years, sleeping four hours without a cough. Okay? When she gets up, he reminds her, do you know you slept for four hours without coughing once? Now, is he building her a mindset? So the first day the mind was not set, but what he was speaking was supporting her to set a mind on what was said. <laughs> you also have that same problem? No, do you have that? Yes. Do you have that same? Yes. Can you see that? Can you both stand up? And now it's been uh, how many years that you have been set free? Almost two years. Never took a medicine after that for that reason. So do you believe the foolish thing that I'm going to ask you to do? Anybody else has got that? Allergy of cough? Okay, any kind of allergy? Any kind of allergy? Please stand up. <coughs> Whom are you looking at and saying? Uske andar allergy hai, tere ko kaise malum? Usko kada rehne dena yaar. He is compassionate person. Might be she said, brother, I want to pray. I want you to pray, and he knows. So he's saying, stand, no, stand, please. This is the time for you to get healed. Tarbar na? Yes, a man of compassion. Yes. <coughs> Praise God. Are you ready? Okay. Close your eyes. And others can also pray as a proxy for anybody. And those watching on the screen, it works the same. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I praise you, Lord. Here is a testimony of our precious sister, Judy, whom you set free from the allergy of coughing, infection in her throat, where she was taking medicine after medicine for 19 years. And that day, Lord, your anointing set her free. By faith, she blew the air out of her lungs in, uh, with tremendous force, believing that the spirit of allergy went out of her. And here she is here to testify that she has been set free. Father God, according to 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4, you are the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, a Father of mercy and Father of all comfort. You who comforted my precious sister Judy, in her affliction, Lord, that same anointing that was on her is comforting those who are in any kind of allergy trouble. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I am now talking to that spirit of allergy in my precious sisters and my brother. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of allergy, I bind you and I curse you to be dead from the root and I cast you out of their body right now in the name of Jesus. Now, with all your force, blow the air out of your lungs. No, 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 like this, 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 like this. Come on, with a jerk. One more time. One more time. One more time. And tell yourself, in the name of Jesus, say that, in the name of Jesus, all the allergy has gone out of me. I am completely set free. This allergy that has gone out of me, is bound and cast into the sea that God has created for it. And it shall never return back. I thank you, Jesus. I am completely set free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Now, isn't it looking foolish that you did not manifest? You did not feel anything. But remember, faith is believing. So go home cheerfully rejoicing and tell yourself, I have been set free from this allergy. How many years you were suffering? Two years. What about you? Uh, just a new residence, okay. Quite some time means uh, 80, 80 years, 90 years. Huh? 
four, five years. And you, brother? Ninety years. Okay. <laughs> huh? Nine years. Okay. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so we are going to now uh, speak the word of God to be released from any kind of prison. Okay? And to be released from that prison, you got to set your mind on God's word. Amen? Amen. So let's start praising God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, your word says, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, you have ordained praise that paralyzes the enemy, that destroys the enemy. Lord, as praises are coming out of their mouth, your anointing destroys every work of Satan. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. For you have given the power and authority in each one of us to cast out demons, to heal the sick. Lord, you have given us power to trample down snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Thank you, Lord, that you are holding each one of us by your right hand. Thank you, Lord, that in the day of trouble, you always are with us. You said you will never leave us, never forsake us. And you are the God who is a living God who answers prayers. Thank you, Lord, for you are my rock. Thank you, Lord, you are my refuge. Thank you, Lord, you are my fortress and you are my God in whom, you, in whom I trust. And thank you, Lord, right now, surely, surely, you have delivered your people from every snares of the devil. In the name of Jesus, my brother, my sister, you are covered under the feathers of the God Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord's spirit is in you. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of knowledge. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of might and strength. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of holiness. The spirit of fear of the Lord. Lord, I thank you. For the anointing of prosperity on the lives of your people. The anointing of success. The curse of failure. The curse of poverty has been destroyed from your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, your anointing carries unlimited power. The resurrection power. And you, almighty God, are using this power in your kingdom for your glory through the lives of all these wonderful people, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love. Thank you, Lord, for your unconditional goodness and unconditional blessings, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that wealth and riches are overflowing in the lives of your people. You have blessed them to be a blessing. Lord, I thank you that each and every one are a blessing to the nations. Blessing to the nations. Blessing. To the nations, Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. And in this prison, you are teaching each and every one to be filled with your love. So that we, in turn, are filled with compassion. We learn compassion. We learn faithfulness. We learn obedience. And we learn to reach out to the lost, O Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace overflowing in the lives of your people, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, in a very special way, I pray for the upper room ministry. Lord, raise up mighty soldiers. Raise up mighty warriors who are living by the word of God. Reaching out. The anointing to study the word. Lord, I thank you. The anointing to study the word. Revelation. Revelation. Understanding. Lord, a great thirst for the word. A great hunger for the word. And to live by the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That each one's tongue is anointed with life. The tongue of a prophet. The tongue of a prophetess. To proclaim the promises of God in the lives of others. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That your glory is revealed wherever your people go, Lord. Your light is shining like a noonday in the lives of these people, O oh Lord. Sicknesses and diseases are destroyed. Curable, incurable diseases are destroyed. 
and your people are being set free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are the God who gives strength to the weak. You give strength to the weary, and you increase the power of the weak. Lord, in their workplace, you are strengthening them to do all things. In their workplace, you are strengthening them with your wisdom that they are able to do every work with the spirit of excellence and they are successful oh lord thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus that you are teaching and giving peace to our children oh lord thank you jesus thank you jesus that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper oh lord thank you lord for the blacksmith that you have put in our lives who have created a weapon blowing the coals and the destroyer has been destroyed oh lord thank you jesus that your word that goes out of our mouth oh lord the word the, the word written when it's spoken out of our mouth oh lord will not return empty it shall accomplish what you desire and achieve the purpose for which almighty god your word was sent oh lord thank you jesus thank you jesus you will never leave us nor forsake us your spirit oh lord dwells in our children oh lord and the children's children and generations oh lord hallelujah 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 you are truly the good shepherd oh lord and we shall lack nothing we shall lack nothing nothing shall we want oh lord and even in the valley of the shadow of death we shall not fear for you are with us your word and your spirit they comfort us oh lord almighty god thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus Lord the gospel of light shines in the lives of your people and especially in every member of the family the ones who are not coming to church in the name of Jesus the light of the gospel flows right now destroying the darkness completely in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah lord your glory your glory your glory rises up in every family your your glory covers up every member of the family lord Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. My friend, uh, just close your eyes and look at your loved ones, every one of them on fire for God. Amen. The gospel light is shining in every member of your family. The devil is a liar. He is telling you look at your loved ones, they are all being lost. That's a lie. Jesus said, believe in the Lord Jesus, you and your household shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everlasting joy is ours. The God is full of mercy and his mercy is new each morning. His glory, his grace is in abundance in our lives, in our families and with this grace and glory we go out and touch the lives of others. The prison door has been destroyed. I said the prison door, the shackles, the chains have been destroyed. The shackles of unemployment destroyed. The shackles of poverty being destroyed. The shackles of sickness destroyed. The shackles of curse and bondage is destroyed completely. And the light is shining in your life. Hallelujah. The shackles of divorce is destroyed. Marriages are blessed. Children are blessed in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. In this prison experience, we have learned to build ourselves for the purpose of God. Thank you and praise you almighty God. In the glorious name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. Praise God. What's the time? Oh no problem. Praise the Lord. Let's give brother a big round of applause. The Lord has really sent us a powerful instrument and then we are seeing him every, every, every month. That is a big blessing to us. This morning I was discussing with somebody, we are in India, in different parts of India, do we get that type of spiritual food that we are getting here? It's a big thing. So we thank God, we thank brother for coming again and again and we will say a prayer for him, okay? I'm going to ask a new person to say a prayer because those people should learn to pray as well, okay? Brother Michael, please come. You pray for brother. All of us, just stretch out your hand. Sit down there only, but stretch out your hand. As brother Michael prays for him. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for bringing our brother Johnson over here to pray with us, Lord. We thank you for 
giving him the grace to preach here and to spread the word and sow the seed in everybody's heart that everybody bears the fruit what you desire lord lord we surrender him as he's traveling tonight take care of him and reach him safely lord and bring him back again so that we once again rejoice in this word and we pray for him and we glorify you lord thank you jesus i i also pray for everybody who have come here t- tonight and i pray for each and everybody's family that they may be blessed and and have the grace which we all prayed here for each one of us thank you lord and have a good night uh, I, uh, can i say something one minute today is my uh, you know in melbourne she is in melbourne my wife and today is 14th for them okay uh, so so it's a birthday and and how great is the birthday that the husband is not there around lot of peace out there it's not sad <laughs> it's not sad it's the joy to see the husband on the mission and life is all about that yeah please uh, somebody can pray for my wife and i want to tell you if she has not sacrificed and she continues to sacrifice i can't come here the the real uh, the real um, battery power back is my wife and my children if they would not have allowed me i wouldn't have been where i am today so so whenever somebody prays they pray only for me and you know the actually speaking the real you know i i am engaged the whole day in preaching but what happens to a person who is sitting at home as a homemaker and to spend the time alone one daughter in melbourne one in california it's really tough when when you are only there and praying for me and my children yeah brother you, you pray i'm going to think somebody has come to pray for his wife it's a birthday a very special day okay priyanka lord jesus uh thank you for brother johnson's wife lord jesus as she is celebrating uh, as she is celebrating her birthday lord jesus uh, you so move mightily for your glory lord jesus uh, cover her always with your precious blood lord jesus and yes lord thank you jesus in jesus name i pray amen, amen. heavenly father we cover Uh, with your most precious blood father god cover p- brother johnson with your most precious blood and the two beautiful daughters father god and son in law of course bless them all father god they are very much in your presence father god 24/7 my father let your angels and saints be always around them wherever they go father god and wherever they go father god may the world see as to how much of sacrifice they have made to see that each and every one is doing something or the other for the lord lord i want to thank you for all each and every one gathered here this evening my father all of them to have come they have come to hear your word my father god change and renew our lives father god bless each and every one in a very very mighty way bless our families as well wherever they are whichever part of the world they are father god may they to be touched father god and may they surrender their lives for you father god bless us father god that we may read the word more and more father god and come closer and closer to you father god for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen amen so brothers leaving okay we'll say the grace we'll go out we'll have dinner immediately and leave the compound for a simple reason tomorrow is ash wednesday okay all of you those of you who can abstain from meat which is going to be a type of a sacrifice let us abstain from meat let's ab- abstain from sweets and whatever you like the most in the testimony that you gave about judy you didn't tell me that, you didn't tell them that uh, noel was so grateful that after 19 years he didn't hear any coughing and you could sleep very peacefully noel noel are you with me yes that that is the best part of the miracle no <laughs> praise god 
okay let's let's all stand up and uh, <laughs> let's all stand and let's say the grace okay brother malvin let us all say the common grace in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen bless us o lord and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty to christ our lord amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen what what is common grace there uncommon grace also i, I was wondering what is uncommon grace